Poland is stepping in as pressure is growing on Germany to supply Ukraine with its Leopard 2 battle tanks. Other countries have them and they want to send them, but as the maker of them, Germany must legally sign off for, that to, for them to be transferred to the war-ravaged Ukraine. Despite the pressure, Berlin has so far resisted doing so, though the defense minister said moments ago they do expect a decision soon. President Zelensky says it's urgent. This is no time for bargaining. This is the time for survival. We need to survive. Poland's prime minister says Germany is wasting time and, quote, we will not passively watch Ukraine bleed to death. Joining us now is the former national security advisor to former President Trump, John Bolton. Uh, good morning, sir. And I guess the first question here is, do you believe that Germany should sign off on this, on them sending the tanks, on other countries being able to send them as well? Well, I think they should sign off. I, I think Germany's performance throughout this war has been incredibly disappointing, despite uh, Chancellor Schultz's uh, statement that near the beginning there would be a sea change in Germany's defense policy. It hasn't happened yet. It needs to happen. And do you believe, do you agree with what the Polish prime minister said this morning, that this deliberation that we've seen happening that's been playing out for the last several weeks is actually in the end hurting Ukraine? Well, of course it is. If they don't have the capability to respond to uh, long rumored uh, impending Russian offensives, uh, that, that's bad for Ukraine. It's bad for the West as a whole because it plays into the Kremlin strategy to win politically what they can't win on the battlefield by splitting NATO. The chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Mike McCall, said yesterday that he believes the United States should send one of its Abrams tanks, basically just one, he argued, it all, is all that would be needed for Germany to then greenlight sending its Leopard tanks. Do you think that would be a reassurance for Germany, and should the Biden administration take that step, in your view? Well, I think we should do it anyway, because I think that's right for Ukraine. And if that brings the Germans along, that's great. But let's be clear, we need to have a conversation with Germany sooner rather than later. They need to step up uh, to their role appropriate to their size economically. Japan has just uh, announced it's going to double its defense budget in the next five years. Where's Germany? Are you concerned that what is playing out here with this de decision makes NATO look fractured? Well, I think NATO is a lot more fractured than some of its political leaders would like to let on. There's been a lot of patting ourselves on the back. But let's, let's not forget, uh, Putin thinks he knows the Germans well. Uh, he was stationed there in the KGB, and I think he sees Germany as the weak point in the alliance. I want to move on to what we saw happen over the weekend, which is uh, the announcement that the FBI searched President Biden's home, which we should note the White House says was done in coordination with his, his attorneys. It was a consensual search that happened, not one that was done with a search warrant. It is still remarkable, though, to see the FBI go into the, pre to the home of a sitting president to search that. What does it say to you about the seriousness of this investigation into the classified documents that were taken? Well, I think it's going to get a lot more serious for Biden, the fact that uh, apparently some of these classified documents go all the way back to his Senate days and yet have traveled around with him. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an incredible gift to Donald Trump that in many people's minds, not the least of which are Senator Dick Durbin, Senator Joe Manchin, two Democrats who said yesterday they thought the administration had been damaged. Uh, I mean, we, we need to do a lot more in the transition process to make sure these classified documents go where they're supposed to go at, at the end of an administration. Well, Trump has argued that the Justice Department is treating Biden differently than they're treating him. Is Trump wrong about that in your view? Well, they are treating Biden differently because Trump treated the Justice Department differently, and uh, the two are not equal, that's for sure. But I think politically, Biden's self-inflicted wounds here have pretty much absolved Trump from the prospect of prosecution. I think it's hard to prosecute a former president to begin with. I think Biden's uh, errors here make it almost impossible. You think Trump won't be prosecuted because of what's happened with Biden? Not on the documents. Now, the January 6th prosecution, the Georgia investigation, th those are different. But on the documents front, I think he's skipped free again. Not even on the obstruction front, because that is what the White House has drawn as the clear distinction, saying, you know, we're cooperating with the National Archives and the Justice Department. Trump fought them uh, for a year and a half that led to the FBI search of Trump's home. Here, here's the key point. We all say, and it's right to say, everybody uh, is... Uh, under the same rule of law. Nobody's treated differently. But I will say this. 
if the Justice Department indicts a former president and fails to get a conviction, the political firestorm that would ensue would tarnish the department for years. Uh, and you have to weigh that in the balance. You can't just be sure that you think you can prove guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You better do it. And if you fail, uh, Trump, Trump could ride that to the White House again, I'm afraid. I want to ask you while you're here this morning, Secretary Pompeo, who you served with, has written a new book, a new memoir, where he is extremely critical and scathing, uh, downright scathing in his assessment of you. And speaking of classified information, he writes, John Bolton should be in jail for spilling classified information. I hope I can one day testify at a criminal trial in a, as a witness for the prosecution. He says your self-serving stories contained classified info and deeply sensitive details about conversations involving a sitting commander in chief. What's your response to Secretary Pompeo? Well, what he knows, I think, in fact, or should know, is that my book went through a four-month-long pre-publication review process precisely to make sure there was no classified information in the book. Uh, and it was arduous at times, I can, I can tell you. The National Security Council senior director responsible for, clear, for, for that review cleared the book, and inside the White House, because Donald Trump didn't want the book published before the election. He fired the senior director, a career employee of the National Archives, from her job uh, and, and tried to get another review going. Now, an interesting point here, and this is critical, before the Justice Department was ordered to bring the suit to stop publication of my book, they interviewed that NSC senior director, Alan Knight, for mm -hmm. 18 hours over five days in the White House. They must have forgotten the thumb screws and the rubber hoses to get her to change her story, and she wouldn't. The book was cleared, uh, and I think if there's an investigative reporter that has spare time, they ought to look at who uh, in the White House and elsewhere in the administration, in the counsel's office, the top political levels at the Justice Department followed Trump's orders to try and suppress the book. I'm not talking about the line attorneys at the Department of Justice, but Trump's uh, top advisors who were content to try and suppress it. You're implying that something illegal happened? What are you saying there? Well, you know, reporters uh, uh, shelter under the First Amendment frequently. I'm sure that's much on your mind. This is a classic effort by Trump at prior restraint. Uh, and in fact, uh, we, I was told that a very top Justice Department official, on hearing that the book had been cleared, said, and I quote roughly, I don't give a blank about the facts. I want the case brought. So I think there's a lot there. This is entirely consistent with Trump behavior, trying to suppress other books. Uh, and that's what happened here. And I, th I think Pompeo knows or should have known about it if, uh, if he didn't know about it. It's incompetence in writing the book for not checking out the facts before he put it down on paper. And if he did know about it, that's uh, malicious and well beyond reckless to say things like that. All right. Ambassador John Bolton, thank you for joining us this morning.